Think back to the early 2010s. Generic pharma companies were the darlings of the market. People couldn't get enough of Sun Pharma, Lupin, Aurobindo, and many other generic pharma companies. Your neighbor would regale you with his analysis of the pharma industry, which inevitably boiled down to, everyone needs medicines, so buy pharma stocks. In fact, in 2015, Dilip Sangvi became the richest Indian when the price of Sun Pharma stock reached its peak. Since that time though, the industry in India has faced challenge after challenge, which reality is reflected in the stock prices of many of these companies. Close to a decade later, many of these stocks trade lower than their mid-decade peaks. So what caused this dramatic reversal of fortunes for these generic companies? The answer is a case study in the effects of industry consolidation. Sensei Kujaku. Hi, I'm Krish Kothari and this is Sensei Kujaku. As always, nothing said in this video or any content posted on this channel is either a recommendation to or not to buy, sell or hold any security. Please do your own due diligence and consult a financial advisor. The US healthcare system is unique in its bloated cost structure that is inadvertently developed over time. The inflated cost structure is such a problem that Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan and Amazon came together a few years back to try and tackle the problem by creating their own company. Their failure to tackle the problem though is a lesson in the difficulty in displacing heavily entrenched players with large incentives not to change the status quo. Pharmacy benefit managers or PBMs are the key players in our story. PBMs are intermediaries in the US healthcare value chain. They are responsible for negotiating contracts for the purchase of medicines, in addition to other roles within the healthcare value chain. PBMs were originally created in the 1960s and have evolved over time to become integral components of the healthcare system in the US. While there are over 60 existing PBMs, about 90% of the US market is controlled by just three PBMs, CVS Caremark, Express Scripts, and OptimRx. These three companies have come to dominate the market through consolidation that began in the 1990s. Over this roughly 25 year period, these three PBMs have cornered a disproportionate share of the market. Their model is simple as it is ruthless and comprises two legs. The first is they negotiate prices of drugs with manufacturers on behalf of insurance companies and are paid rebates, which are essentially discounts for manufacturing of drugs. They then retain a portion of the rebates and pass on the rest. The second leg involves pharmacies and insurers. The PBMs receive payments from the insurers and pay the pharmacies based on actual usage of the drugs by patients, with the spread between these two transactions being their income. What does all this have to do with Indian generic pharma companies? Remember, the PBMs are the ones who negotiate prices with manufacturers. If you remember your introductory economics classes from college, the competitive dynamics of an industry are largely influenced by the number of players involved. As the number of buyers reduce dramatically, culminating in essentially three players controlling a multi-trillion dollar industry, the negotiating power of these three companies increased meaningfully, to the point that they could essentially dictate terms with drug producers like the Indian pharma companies. Now you may say that lowering drug prices is a good thing. It is in theory, but the reality is a little more complicated. As generics companies were being squeezed, they were compelled to constantly cut costs. This led to serious complications relating to quality of output, including at many high-profile Indian companies. Additionally, the competition among generics companies kept rising globally as more companies were drawn to the allure of the size of the US market. Increasing competition among manufacturers and reduced negotiating room with PBMs proved to be a hard to contend with pincer attack on the generics companies their margins began to slide. To make things worse, the increasing competition meant the manufacturers had to continue spending on R&D, sales organizations, and other overhead costs. Consequently, large debt figures began cropping up on what were once pristine balance sheets. This made things worse on the PNL front as well, as interest costs began ballooning. Another major challenge faced by Indian companies was the increase in FDA compliance costs. This was the result of the enactment of the Generic Drug User Fee Amendments of 2012. As per this legal amendment, the generic companies filing new drug applications and ANDAs were required to pay fees for each drug application, for each inspection, as well as annual fees. 
This not only increased costs, but more importantly, had a dramatic impact on the ability of the FDA to conduct inspections globally. International inspections tripled from 2007 to 2019, the last year before the pandemic. In light of the increased compliance costs, companies attempted to reduce costs, but in some cases ended up cutting corners and sacrificing quality. The net results of all these developments was a consistently worsening track record of FDA compliance among Indian pharma companies. Virtually no company has remained unscathed by FDA observations and in some cases warning letters. The increased costs facilitated more frequent and more detailed inspections, which in many cases expose the quality of many pharma companies, not just in India, but around the world. What can pharma companies do to solve the problem? The answer may be found in the very firms that created their problems, the PBMs. Generic companies may have no choice but to fight fire with fire and consolidate themselves. In the Indian context, this may be particularly hard given that the companies are generally promoter-driven and therefore less likely to be amenable to takeovers. Moreover, high promoter holdings generally preclude hostile takeovers as well. If, however, consolidation among Indian companies does take place in coming years, it would dramatically alter the competitive dynamics and balance of power. Enhanced bargaining power when negotiating with PBMs is crucial to reverting to more normalized pricing. Further, PBMs will have fewer generics companies to pit against one another to lower prices. It is easy to offer solutions without being responsible for their implementation. Consolidation, while aiding generics companies, may also have unforeseen negative consequences. For instance, competition watchdogs around the world may object or require onerous divestments of brands, which would render any merger or acquisition untenable. Nonetheless, it is clear that something has to give for generics pharma companies to rise once again. I hope you found this video useful and learned something valuable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching. Sensei Kujaku.